Guys, welcome back to another video and in today's video I was actually looking at some of the comments and I typically just answer some of the comments unless there's one that sticks out to me or a few that stick out and then I decide to make a video for it and this one here actually stuck out to me because um, it had a lot of questions uh, a lot of questions needing answers and it's also on a video that I posted about two years ago which to this day still is getting views, still is, uh, I guess, answering people's questions, uh, curiosity. And yeah, it's kind of time to do a little update, I guess, from that video. And I'll link that probably up in the one of the corners of the screen. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started on the question. But before we do, go ahead and leave this video a like because it's going to be a good one. It's going to be packed with a lot of answers, a lot of questions that you probably have and uh, subscribe to the channel so you can see these videos when they come out. Question is, my son is about to head out into the fleet in Virginia. I'm trying to gather some items for him to take. Real question and please be honest, how often do people steal and do fights often break out because of this? Do people ever get reported for stealing? I've heard they break into locks. Will I be able to mail my son items while he is on a ship? Will there be communication or will he be allowed to have his personal phone can he have a little palm-sized speaker out there? Are laptops allowed? Will he be able to have his own vitamins slash supplements out there? Is there any way for him to be able to purchase things out in the fleet that he may need? I heard restrooms are pretty disgusting and so are the showers. Can he take his own medicine like Tylenol, ibuprofen? Will he need a pair or two of civilian clothes? And how do you all do... Or how do we prevent motion sickness? No matter military topic, um, you know, my tour videos that I'm coming out with. Anything that you guys have questions about or that you may know the topic more than I do, leave it down in the comment section because it not only um, helps push the video out, but it also gives me ideas as this is to make a video. It also answers questions that maybe other people have. And we can communicate in the comment section answering your question and answering some of the questions that other people have that watch the video. But just look at the comments and don't actually leave a comment. So I don't want to miss one of the questions. So I'm just going to read off each question and answer it one at a time. So let's go ahead. How often do people steal and do fights often break out because of this? So we're, we're not in prison, although it feels like it sometimes. Um, but people steal a lot. Sadly to say, a lot of stealing goes on um, on the ship because if you can imagine, you are away from stores, you are away from places to get snacks, places to get supplies. So if you have nice stuff, if you have snacks that people like, if you just have something different that nobody else can get at that time and you do not lock it up, you do not pay attention to where you put it, it can disappear. Pretty much goes for anything that you bring onto the ship. Um, if you have anything of value, it's always recommended to lock it up in your locker or in your coffin locker. Uh, if it is something of high value, give it to the MA, see if they have a safe place to, to lock it up to store it, or just don't bring it on board. I would say some of the items that I've seen actually get stolen or it either gets tossed in the trash would be like shower shoes, uh, soaps, um, like body wash by the bottles, shampoos by the bottles, because uh, one, everybody likes their own different shampoos and uh, soaps. Some people buy because of the price, some people buy because of the ingredients and, you know, vice versa. So a lot of times when people get showers, when people go to take their showers, they'll leave their stuff in the showers, in the head, and it either disappears because other people will take it or it gets tossed in the trash. That was one common thing that I saw on board our ship. Uh, shower shoes, hygiene items like razors, uh, toothbrushes. I mean, people lose their stuff and um, they get stolen and it also gets tossed in the trash. Anything that you have, you have a coffin locker and you should have a stand-up locker that's attached or that's with your rack and birthing. Make sure that you have a lock on both of those. Either have two key locks if you're able to keep up with a key. Or what I did is I had one of my locks was a combination lock and the other lock was a key lock. That way I could lock my key in the combination and I didn't have to hold on to the key throughout, throughout the day, throughout the ship. Um, medical emergencies, training, outside the ship, all that kind of stuff. It's very easy to, to lose the key. 
and I did not want to remember two combinations. So just a little tip, get one lock that's a combination and get another lock that is a key. So that way you can find some way that's easy for you to uh, lock your stuff up but also not have to worry about losing a key or forgetting combinations. Guys will be guys, boys will be boys, fights break out, and birthing tip typically. Uh, it doesn't happen all, all the time. It's usually like play fights that happen, not too often at least on a ship, um, that people get really like upset with e each other to where they were like actually physically fighting. But um, there are times where there will be some fighting, but not, not for like stealing and things like that. People don't really report too much stealing that goes on it's kind of like, like like i said it goes from like your your shampoos your soaps your snacks if you leave the stuff unlocked um or if you leave it sitting out on your rack you leave it on the couch you leave it out for other people to to get it then it's kind of on you but if it's like a high value high cost item very few things uh got reported uh typically as long as you keep your lock for your lockers locks because a lot of us we forget to either lock them or we leave one or both unlocked because it's convenient to just run in grab what you need and leave without without actually locking your lock you know how a lot of people like to fake close their lock to where it looks like it's, it's closed and it's locked but it's not actually secured um i would say that's more of the issue because a lot of people and just don't lock their actual locks. And that's usually how things get stolen, not because the, the lock gets broken into. Uh, will I be able to mail my son items while he's on the ship? That is, yes, we we do receive mail on the ship. Just because there's a specific time you think your package will arrive, uh, it, it all depends on when the ship has schedulings for uh, the, the mail to be dropped off, for supplies to be dropped off, for fuel to be dropped off. Because there are times where we'll pull into port just to grab mail, just to grab food, fuel, and head back out. But you can um, you can send things to, to the ship. And each ship has their own unique address. So make sure that you have the correct address. Uh, make sure that you actually put the, the sailor's name on that package and not... Um, you know, like medical department or uh, just the ship name. Make sure you actually have the sailor's name on that package. Will there be communication or will he be allowed to have his personal phone? So there is something, um, there is, when we were underway, there was a landline that they had on the ship and only certain times they would put the landline out, usually later at night. You can make a phone call, but you had to use it with a phone card. So you have to pay for those for those minutes when we're out at sea. Typically, uh, email is probably the best. Depending on the mission, depending on the location that we're in, a lot of emails may be in the queue, ready to be pushed off the ship. Just depends uh, what status that the ship is in at that moment. Typically, emailing would be the, the best route. Uh, you can still mail a letter. Again, that may take some time to go back and forth. And personal phones, we do have a personal phones. Typically, we have it on board for the music and, you know, pictures and videos and things like that. Because when you're out in sea, out in the middle of the ocean, there's zero cell service. So typically, you just have it for music, movies, games, things like that. And you also have it for when you pull into port. And keep in mind, when you pull into port, either you need a SIM card, that way you do not get charged an outrageous bill uh, for the international charges, or make sure that you have some type of international package that covers you for the areas and for the countries that you are in. Um, so can you have little palm-sized speakers and a laptops allowed? Again, laptops, tablets, all electronic devices kind of go with not getting them stolen. And it goes with, yes, you can have them. It's just how, how many... Uh, like high value items do you want with you and can you do without without bringing it on board for it to get stolen damaged uh, lost and also like a lot of this stuff you're not going to be able to have um, all of the capabilities of utilizing it because you you will not have any service while you're out there out at sea which i do think some of the the new ships come with wi-fi but i'm pretty sure it's going to be either spotty wi-fi or depending on the mission 
um, there's going to be certain hours that you can use it and certain hours that it won't be available. Uh, when it comes to the palm size speaker, I definitely recommend sending speakers, taking a speaker with you. Uh, anything that's like a rechargeable speaker, preferably like, like a waterproof speaker. When we were on board the ship, almost everyone had some type of portable speaker they kept with them. They either had music playing in their workspace, they would take it out outside of the ship with them, or they would have it during cleaning stations, cleaning birthing, things like that. So highly recommend having some type of small portable speaker. Um, will he be able to have his own vitamin supplements out there? Yes, you can have your own vitamins and supplements. You can ship those through through the mail, or you can just stockpile if you have room for it whenever you pull into port or before you pull out. Uh, what I did is I, ha I had my bodybuilding.com uh, account set up for monthly shipments. So I would get quest bars, protein, pre-workout, aminos. Every month, it was a, either, every 30 days or every 45 days, it would automatically send uh, to the ship. And I wouldn't have to worry about logging on, the connectivity. Same exact products would continue being shipped to me every month. So you can have supplements, you can have vitamins. Thing is, just make sure you have room for it all, whether it's in your workspace, in your stand-up locker, or in your coffin locker. Is there any way of him being able to purchase things out there in the fleet he may need? Um... Really, that comes down to email or if you can contact off the ship for people to send you things. Um, the ships do have ship stores. Typically, that's going to be like your boot camp items, snacks, Red Bulls, candy bars, chips, things like that. Um, it's going to be a lot of your necessities. So it's going to be like underwear, socks, undershirts, shower shoes, soaps, shampoos, and just like super, super basic items. Also, what the ship has is called a Navy cash card. Typically, when you check on to a ship, that's going to be one of those little boxes that you have to complete. And that is um, you signing up for and uh, obtaining a Navy cash card. Navy cash card is pretty much a debit card, but it is the Navy's version um, of you separating your personal funds into this card. That way, whenever you are buying things on the ship, you're using your Navy cash card when you are out in town at these random ports, international ports, things like that. Uh, they want you to use your Navy cash card. That way, whatever money that you put onto that card is the only money that you can use, the only money that somebody, if they were to hack into the card, hack into your system of that Navy cash, they can only use what's on that card and they don't have any means of getting to your personal account, your personal funds. Because if you can think about it, when you are out at sea, when you are away from connectivity, um, things could be happening to your accounts and you would never know it for, for months until you finally checked or until you finally realize a card doesn't work or you're getting default on something or uh, some, some mail comes through saying that you purchased something and you owe money for it. Anything that keeps an eye on your accounts while you are away, uh, keep that in mind. I heard restrooms are pretty disgusting and so are the showers. Can you take his own medicine like Tylenol and ibuprofen out there? So um, the restrooms and showers, which we call the head in the Navy, um, we have birthing cleaners every day. There's a group of people that it's for us. It rotated every week, but you have a group of people that live in that specific birthing or live in that specific area of the ship, and they are in charge of cleaning um, the showers, the sinks, the floors, uh, the toilets, the living areas, making sure that the beds are tucked in the way boot camp style is, making sure. Only thing hung up is the uh, coveralls that we have that we work with. Now, typically, the standardization throughout the birthings, there is like a big Navy instruction for how birthing should be. But I think it comes down to the commander and what they allow. And for us, it was uh, kind of like the chiefs, chiefs mess, the officers, commanders, they kind of came up with a birthing instruction for the ship. And that's what we had to abide by. Anytime you're walking around birthing, you're walking around the bathroom, you're walking around the area where the sinks are at, or if you're actually in the shower, always have shoes on, always have shower shoes on. Because although the floors get clean, it is very, very disgusting sometimes what happens to those floors all it takes is one valve to be turned on one valve to be turned off and it can change the pressure in the system in the tanks and sometimes that CHT that uh, waste in those tanks will come up the drains and it will be all over the floor so just keep that in mind and there's a lot of people 
we've caught in the past, they like to use the same mop around the toilets, around they use in the like living areas, which is a huge no-no. So um, everyone doesn't have common sense, sadly. So just make sure that you are wearing shoes, make sure you're wearing shower shoes, because all you're doing is just tracking that into your rack, onto your feet, onto your skin, and it could be a bad day um, for that bacteria. So you can have your own over-the-counter medicine like Tylenol, ibuprofen, things like that. Anything over-the-counter you are uh, allowed to have, just make sure that you have it locked up in your rack or in your uh, coffin locker. Any other medications that you need, make sure that you go to medical. Make sure that you're talking to medical, communicating to medical if something is wrong. And if you do need something as simple as ibuprofen, Tylenol, things like that, medical will have it as well. Um, there is a sick call time, so make sure that you are going there during the sick call times. All the other times are mostly for emergencies. And any of the medications, if they give you extras, just make sure that you lock it up in your rack. And a last question, when it comes down to civilian clothes. So first thing you need to do, or first thing that needs to be done, is making sure that you go to your rack, put all of the military items that you are needing to have with you. Every bit of military items, sea bags, uniforms, socks, boots, PT shoes, PT clothes, um, your covers, your uh, dress whites, your dress blues, all of your uniforms, anything military, pretty much that you have sea bag wise or that you were given at boot camp, you need those items with you on the ship. When it comes to the civilian life, snacks, clothes, gym clothes, uh, clothes when you pull into port, uh, electronics, all that kind of stuff, that should go second. Whatever you have additional room for, then that's what you have to figure out where that stuff will, will fit at. You can have civilian clothes. I do highly recommend having at least two nice pairs of clothes, whether that's just like a super good shirt, nice shirt, collared shirt, button shirt. Because when you go out uh, to some of these different areas, um, certain clothing is required for you to, to visit like Thailand. Uh, some of the temples, you have to wear... Um, pants, you have to wear collared shirts, you have to wear long sleeves. So just make sure that you have items um, that are like for nice casual dress and for like relaxation, gym wear, you know, daily casual things. But also make sure you have at least um, two nice outfits for when you pull into port. How do you deal with motion sickness? So typically a couple of days, about a week out, definitely a couple of days out from going underway, starting deployment. Anytime that ship leaves the pier for uh, an extended period of time, medical should be coming around or offering or telling you to start thinking about Dramamine um, or Meclizine. Those are the medications we typically uh, give out. Those are the most common ones that we give out. Uh, taking those about 24 hours to uh, the morning of typically helps. Um, if that doesn't help, then there is like a, a patch that you can also use. There's other me medications that you can possibly get from medical if they have it in their formulary. And lastly, there is some medications that medical can just knock you out if you are still having a bad time. If you're having issues with it, tough it out for a little bit, but make sure that you see medical um, if it continues because you will start losing a lot of fluids and uh, you can't be you know, barfing on the ship and you need to get to medical because most likely you will become severely dehydrated and, you know, you have a job to do. So you have, you have a watch and if you're not able to stand that watch, now that work is going to fall on everyone else. So make sure you're being smart if you are uh, one of those that has issues with the motion sickness. Um, Any time that you have gone, or if you've never gone out out to sea, take it anyways. Just a precautionary. Uh, take it as medical advises. And if you have issues, make sure that you see medical immediately. That is going to be the end of the video. Hope it answered some questions. I know there was a lot of questions here. A lot of good information. Um, if you have any additional questions of the information that I covered in the video. Leave those down in the comment section below. I'll either answer those in the comment or create a video. So if it is something that you have questions of, something that you know more of, some tips that you want to give to um, add on to the video, leave those down in the comment section below so we can talk about them. And until next time, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.